Jimmy Ferguson of the Lawson Road Church of Christ in Jonesboro, Arkansas. This is the third video in a four-part series on the theme of moral decline. In this video, we're going to be giving our attention to the subject of homosexuality. In Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20, God said through the prophet, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. Wouldn't you agree that such is indeed a problem in our society today? People calling certain actions or behavior good or acceptable when God calls it evil. Powerful groups in our society today are promoting homosexuality. Many politicians are in support of this lifestyle. So this is certainly a subject which deserves our study. But what we're concerned about in this video series is what does the Bible say? And so as we look at this subject, what does the Bible have to say about homosexuality? First of all, consider the definition. What is homosexuality? Well, by definition, homosexuality is the sexual desire or behavior directed toward a person or persons of one's own sex. Now, both male and female can be homosexuals in that either can direct sensuality to the same sex. We all know how prominent and how open this conduct is in our society. Those who practice homosexuality are not only open with their actions, but also are increasingly vocal in pressing for the removal of all social stigma associated with this conduct. They also insist that they be given their rights, including the right of marriage, same-sex marriage. Consider the question, is homosexuality normal? Some say that they're born that way but it is oftentimes referred to as an alternate lifestyle. Let's see what the scriptures have to say. Paul wrote about some in the first century who were guilty of that conduct. In Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27, he said that some of their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Again, that's Romans 1, 26 and 27. Now, according to that passage, homosexuality is not normal behavior. In fact, Paul says that it is against nature. It is an unnatural act. It is a perversion. Furthermore, God created us male and female, Genesis chapter 2. Not male and male, not female and female. He joined together the man and the woman in marriage. Now, what does God say about homosexuality? We're going to be looking at some passages of Scripture very briefly in both the Old and New Testaments. First of all, when the Lord pronounced judgment upon the cities of Sodom, Sodom and Gomorrah, He said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 18 and verse 20, The cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grievous. Furthermore, we read that when two of God's messengers came to Lot's house in Sodom, we read in Genesis 19 and 5, that certain men of Sodom compassed the house, both young and old, and called unto Lot and said, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Now that word know is not used in the sense of to become acquainted with. It is used as a euphemism, meaning to have sexual relations with. We also read from the Law of Moses in Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13, God says, If a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. Again, Leviticus 20 and verse 13. So the seriousness of this wickedness is understood when we see that God called it an abomination. That's a word meaning loathsome or disgusting. Not only that, but homosexuality was a capital offense in God's sight in that those who were guilty were to be put to death. I alluded a moment ago to Romans 1, 26 and 27. Let's read that passage in the New Testament. Paul says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another. 
man with man, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet. Look at another New Testament passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. Paul says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not, note this, shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he lists a number of sins which are considered by God to be unrighteousness. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind, that is homosexuals, nor thieves, nor covetous, drunkards, revelers, extortioners. Again, he says, these will not inherit the kingdom of God. Could it be any clearer? The practice of homosexuality is completely against the way that God created us. It's a perversion. It's unnatural. And if that is not enough, the Apostle Peter affirms that the destruction of Sodom serves as an example for those who would choose to live ungodly lives. He writes in 2 Peter 2 and verse 6 that God turned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes and condemned them with an overthrow making them an example unto those that after should live ungodly. Again, very, very clear. Homosexuality is sinful in the sight of God. It is an abomination. Along these same lines, many have sought to redefine marriage so as to give same-sex couples the right of marriage. My friend, God has already defined marriage. One man and one woman. We read in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24, Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife. Again, one man, one woman. No one can change that definition. May we have the courage and conviction to call sin, sin, no matter what the sin is. Again, God said in Isaiah 5 and 20, Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil.